right here. So, can you hear me? Is this working? No. <laughs> yeah, let's try. Okay, 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 good. Oh, I guess, I see, yeah, I guess. Yeah, so thanks a lot for, for the invitation to give this mini course. This is not my first time at the, at the Erwin Schrodinger Institute. I came here for a school in 2013 and was very similar to this one organized by Athanas, I'm sure, and, and somebody else. And I, I don't remember anything of, of, of what I've learned, of course, but I remember it was very cool, very exciting. So it's a big pleasure to be 10 years later on the other side and hope Today's student will find this call as exciting as, as uh, I found at the time. Okay, so um, I will talk about uh, anti deceitful geometry. But before that, I will need to recall something about hyperbolic geometry. Okay. I want to start by recalling the model, some models of hyperbolic space. So let me fix some notation. So for let's fix x, y to points in R n plus m. I will denote use this symbol product n m just to denote the standard bilinear form on R n plus m of signature n m. So this is x one y one plus plus x n y n minus x n plus one y n plus one minus sign until x n plus m y n plus m. Okay, so a model of hyperbolic space is uh, to take points in R n plus one, this is n dimensional hyperbolic space, such that this bilinear form of signature n one is equal to minus one. Here I'll draw a picture. So this this condition gives a double sheeted hyperboloid. We say the hyperbolic space is one connected component. So let's say the last coordinate, the negative one, is positive. Okay, so this is the so called hyperboloid model. And actually, this immediately endows this space with the Riemannian metric. Riemannian metric, which is just the res restriction of this bilinear form to the tangent space, which is positive definite because this point is negative, so the orthogonal is positive because of, of the signature n1. Okay? And I'll actually write this in another way. We can also do another thing. We can also keep both components and identify them. So equivalently, this is same thing. We don't select one connected component, but then we quotient by plus or minus the identity, since both components are essentially equivalent. And then yet another way to rewrite this is to now not impose this just minus one, but just negative. So we can actually do the following thing. One is negative, and then we mod out not just by plus or minus the identity, but by multiplication by any number. Okay, and this is what is called the projective model of the hyperbolic space, because this immediately gives an injection into the projective space at the end. Okay, so this is the hyperboloid and the projective model, then there are other models. I don't want to give an entire course on hyperbolic geometry, but for instance, there is the upper space in which, so we take x in R n, such that the last coordinate is positive, and we end up with the metric which is one plus, you have probably already seen this, but I will use this model very often. It's just uh, at least in dimension two, so it's just the upper space. Um, and 
I will uh, use, there is also the ball model, which is basically equivalent of Poincare ball model. I'll, I'll draw pictures in some of these models sometimes, so just keep in mind that I may jump from one to another. Uh, so, what we want to do is essentially the same thing, but instead, in Riemannian instead of Riemannian geometry, we want to consider the analog space in Lorentzian geometry. Space or geometry. Okay, so now what we do, I'm going to define the uh, n dimensional anti decita space, do the same thing. But now we take a bilinear form of signature n minus 1, comma 2. And we impose this to be equal to minus 1. Here there is already a first difference that this thing is now connected. We cannot just select one connected component, but the definition in the second line still makes sense. This is invariant, of course, by multiplication by minus 1. So I want to mimic the second line here. Uh, and in the same way, we can go to, from the second to the third line. So we can actually consider this as projectivization of this negative cone, which immediately gives us a projective model. So again, this model here has the advantage that the space becomes immediately endowed with a Lorentzia metric, metric. But this Lorentzia metric, it's like a Riemannian metric. It's a bilinear product on each tangent space, except that the signature is n minus 1, 1. I guess we will hear a lot about Lorentzian metrics in the, in the um, Generality mini, general relativity mini course. Um, but the second space here has the advantage uh, that we can easily define its boundary. So the boundary to infinity, here I'm doing the same thing that one does in, in Lorentzian geometry, the boundary of, N, of hyperbolic space It's just the projectivization is, is the boundary of this thing in a projective space. So it's the, project, the projectivization of the null cone. And here we do the same thing. Okay, so this is for the definitions. And now, I in this mini course, I will be mostly interested in three dimensional anti receptor geometry. Why that? But the key fact for the entire mini course is that anti receptor space of dimension three is, now we need to understand what this means, what in, this is means, is equal to means, but this is the group PSL to R which is actually the isometry group of H2. It's the identity component of the isometry group of H2. So why, why is this? This is because PSL2R acts on, on the upper high space model. So in dimension two, the upper high space model is, we have basically the complex numbers of positive imaginary part, and PSL2R acts here by A, B, C, B, Z is equal to A, Z plus B over C, Z plus D. It is gives an isomorphism between the group PSL2R and the group of isometries of H2 in the upper space model. So I need to explain why this arrow is true, uh, and this is what I will do next. But this arrow is the, the uh, starting point links to type Miller theory. Okay, so type Miller theory is, say, the, the, the study of certain structural surfaces. 
So for instance, the study of hyperbolic, hyperbolic metrics. There are many viewpoints of Peck-Miller theory, but the, the viewpoint I adopt here is mostly the, the hyperbolic viewpoint, so the study of hyperbolic metrics on surfaces. Yeah. Yes. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll try to call. I'll, I'll, I'll try to call this PSL two R maybe later, and uh, maybe this because probably you want to take for you anti aceta space is the universal cover of this guy probably, but for some reason which I hope will come. We come up later, uh, I prefer to, to I mean, I, I don't mind too much that it, it, it violates causality, but it will have other advantages. So, okay, just caveat, there, there might be a difference with respect to the other mini course. For me, this is not simply connected in particular. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll draw pictures later. Okay, so now the, the point is to convince you about this equality. So how do we do that? Basically, we redo the same definition, but we work, so we consider V the vector space of two by two matrices, real matrices, which is same as R4, of course. And we endow it with a quadratic form, Q. Uh, so Q of the matrix X is minus the determinant of X. Okay? Um, so why do I do that? So this is, see, yeah, this is a quadratic form of, of signature. 2, 2. It's actually easy, easy actually to write the associated bilinear form. So how to, let, let me call this A. Okay. There is actually a formula. If you know a quadratic form, you can easily recover the associated bilinear form. So what is this? this you need to do one half Q of A plus B minus Q of A minus Q of B. So this is one half minus the determinant of A plus B plus that A plus that B. But there is also a formula for this thing. Huh? So this is, the, this is one half. And here the determinant of A plus B is minus determinant of A minus the determinant of B. A minus, then there is the trace of the adjoint matrix of A times B. And then we have that A plus that B is canceled out. So here, the bilinear form is one half the trace of the adjoint matrix A times B, where what is the adjoint matrix? This is BA minus B minus C. Okay? So here we have a bilinear form on this four-dimensional vector space. We use this bilinear form to, to unveil these definitions. So what this gives is exactly that ADS3 is the space of matrices such that the determinant of A is 1. So this is minus Q of A uh, modulo plus or minus the identity. So this is exactly PSL to R. Um, yeah, and from time to time in this, in this course, I want to make some comments on Lie groups for those who like Lie groups. So uh, if you like Lie groups, can you please, please raise your hand? There's quite a, bunch, quite a bunch of people who like Lie groups. The others will certainly like them at the end of the mini course. Uh, so some com in red, I will make some comments about Lie groups. So actually, ADS3, so under this identification, basically the bilinear form that we have on the tangent at the identity of ADS3, which is PSL to R, is up to a multiple, a killing form. Uh, 
uh, on, on, the, on the Lie algebra, so on SL to R. We, we consider PSL to R as a Lie group. This is actually a nat natural metric, that, the by invariant metric that you get on, on, on the group. Uh, a quick word about, well, maybe not so quick because this is important. What is, in this model, what is the isometry group of ADS? So, okay, I'll try to follow your advice and call this PSL to R, okay? But sometimes I might, I might end up writing ADS3, but let's keep in mind that for me, ADS3 is, is PSL to R. So this isometry group is actually the product of two copies of PSL to R. How does this work? Well, if you have a pair AB, of matrices up to plus or minus the identity, you let it act on X, which is X is again an element of PSL to R. This we define to be just equal to A X B minus one. Uh, a, B are unideterminate matrices. So by the product rule for the determinant, these preserves the determinant, therefore clearly preserve the quadratic form and therefore preserve the the metric, the Lorentzian metric. Uh, little remark is that it's easy actually to check this identification with the stability. So we have a special point when we consider anti aceta space as a Lie group, it's the identity. The stabilizer of the identity is easily checked to be the diagonal. This is a pair of pairs. Okay, uh, this is easy because of course A, B of the identity equal the identity, if and only if, well, this is just A, B minus one is the identity, if and only if A equal B, okay? And using some Lie li groups again, it's actually easy to show this identity here. So using Lie groups. Again, so let me make a com let me just say this uh, in words. You want to check that this map, so we have defined a map from here to here, because this is an isometric action, so given a pair AB, it acts on isometries here. Want to check it's, it's um, an injective and surjective. That it is injective is easy, because if a pair AB fixes everything, every X in particular fixes the identity. So it must be of this form. Uh, and then PSL2R has no center. Has no center. So nobody commutes with, with every element. And now we ha you have an injective map, which is a morphism between Lie groups of the same, di of the same dimension. And they are connected because I'm taking the connected comp component. So this is uses the, the same dimension. Six. Both groups have dimension six. Uh, exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. You can exactly do the same. So this is this is a good comment that anti theta space is this negatively called Lorentzian manifold. It shares some futures of hyperbolic geometry, of course, but it also shares some futures of spherical geometry. In particular, it shares with S3 the property of being a Lie group. Uh, and see, these are some of these arguments you can actually you can actually repeat for S04, which are the, which is the isometry group of S3 instead of sorry, uh, sorry, 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 S03, S03 shares with S03. Some properties like P, if, so you replace H2 by S2 and, and you can follow a sort of parallel. Okay. Now, what I want to say, I, I want to sort of cook up some understanding of this Lie group. So first of all, let's, let's understand the topology. The following thing will be just topological construction. Then I will draw a picture and then will some, I will try to sort of build some geometry out of this picture. Uh, so the first claim is that PSL2R is homomorphic to a solid torus. Uh, 
Okay. Um, how do I prove this claim? Well, what I will do is I define, I fix, fix some point, x naught, for instance, i in the upper half space, upper half plane model, and I define a map from PSL to R to H2. This, map, this map I take in isometry A, and I look at the image of x naught. Okay? I have a map to H2. What is the fiber? So this is the fiber of this map. So if I have two elements in the fiber, A, B, R in F minus 1, X naught, well then A is equal to B up to percomposing with some gamma which stabilizes X naught. Gamma stabilizes X naught. X naught. What is the stabilizer of a point in, in, in the hyperbolic plane? It's a group of rotations, of course. So this is, actually what is this? We can write it. Okay, I should have drawn this picture in the upper half plane. Uh, again, I, I, I might end up confusing all the models very often. Okay, this is the group of rotations. We can write the stabilizer of the point just like the group of rotations. <laughs> or theta, except this is up to, so theta is in R modulo uh, Z pi. This is ESO2, which is topologically an S1, okay? So I have a map, a fiber bundle over H2, whose fiber is a circle, but H2 is contractible, so the, 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 the bundle is trivial, so PSL to R is topologically H2 times S1. Disk times a circle, it's a solid torus. So I can start drawing my favorite picture, which will stay with us for a while. So for the moment, what we know is that this is a solid torus. So let me draw a solid torus. And what we know is there is a favorite point, which is the identity. Okay? Um, so I have time until 11.30, is that right? Okay. Um, so what I want to do next uh, is to understand better what, what kind of geometry is there. So there's two things I want to understand. Uh, what is the boundary? And what are the geodesics? And then I will be very happy for today. So let's talk about the boundary. So as you can imagine, we have seen that PSL2R is a solid torus. So what can be the boundary? can only be a torus, right? It's the only reasonable thing. Reasonable thing. But how to, how to give sense to this? So let's see, what is the boundary? What is the boundary of ADS3? So the definition before, okay, it was maybe here. Okay. The definition was here, so it's the projectivization of the null cone. Yeah, and of course, of course, here the students should have paid attention that when you projectivize, you need to take away the zero, of course, okay? You want to look, points of projective space are classes of non-zero vectors up to multiplication. Okay. So the boundary following the definition is 
will consist of matrices A, on which are non-zero, and whose, on which the, the, the quadratic form is zero, so the determinant is zero, up to multiplication. And uh, um, this is equivalent for a two by two matrix to be a rank one matrix. Okay. Uh, so it's the space of rank one matrices up to multiplication, and I claim that this is RP1 times RP1, the product of two circles. Well, how, how can you give a two by two proje projective matrix, sorry, a rank one matrix up to projectivization? Well, before projectivizing, basically you can, you can build it as the multiplication of the column vector and the, and the line vector, right? But then this metric up to, up to scalar is like the same as taking this up to scalar and this up to scalar. So it's rank, uh, this is basically encoded by two points in projective space. This, one, this vector is basically the image of the matrix and this vector, this is actually the image and this is essentially the kernel up to switching the elements and changing sign. So another way to say this is that we can give a map here that from A takes the image and the kernel. This is a homeomorphism. Okay. This seems very abstract, but there is a, an easy criterion. criterion to understand the boundary. So a sequence xn, let xn be a sequence in PSL to R, okay? Then xn converges to the pair of points PQ, let's say in RP1 times RP1, if and only if, the following, if and only if, there exists a point x0 in H2, such that xn, xn of x0 converge into P, and xn minus one of x0 is converging to Q. Here I really draw the picture in the, in the disk model. So we take a point x0, we take a sequences of isometries, so they are mapping this point to some, it's, it's gonna be a divergent sequence, and let's say x, this is x and times x zero is converging here, and the inverses are converging here, okay? Um, and this is actually equivalent to the same condition being true for every x naught the same holds, just because, uh, just because if you start with another point x1, you have some distance and the isometries preserve the distance. So the two sequences will stay at bounded distance, and therefore they will converge. If one converges to some point, the other one converges to the same point. So here we, kind of understand better what the boundary means is sort of compactification of PSL to R, which is given by sort of encoding the way isometries diverge. Okay. And the last thing I want to talk about are ge the geodesics. I sort of want to compute the geodesics yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Good point. So I'm, let's make an example. So let's take, uh, for instance, a sequence. Uh, let's say y n, a sequence of points in H two. 
and yn converges to some p. Okay? And I define a n to be equal to the uh, uh, order two rotation. Um, is this the best example I can make? No, let me make another one. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 but I need to develop, yeah, okay, let's do it. Order two rotation, fixing, uh, fixing uh, um, YN, okay? We have a sequence of points, YN, going to some point P, okay? Uh, the, here is X naught, and actually one can check that basically uh, AN, times uh, x naught is converging itself to p, but a n is equal to a n minus one. So actually, the boundary, the boundary of this of this space of uh, so in this case, basically, a n is converging uh, as according to this definition to p p just because it is equal to its inverse. So this, the diagonal is actually, you can, one way you can see it is the boundary of this order to elliptics. This will be useful, which is basically a copy of H2 inside this as well. Uh, no, why? Ah, yeah, 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 okay, okay, in this sense, yes, yes. Uh, but you need to, so a geodesic, I, I don't think it's the natural way to see it. First of all, if you wanna know a geodesic in, in H2, you need two, different, two distinct points. But well, here, the two points are allowed to be the same. I don't think this is the right, so of course, you can see the space of geodesics as a subset, but I don't think this is really the right way to think about it, but, um, now we study geodesics, and maybe uh, this will give a more clear picture. Okay, so geodesics. So what we do is there is a, actually a general formula for geodesics in the, in the sort of hyperbolic model. So what we do is we take a point P, this works in any dimension, ADSN, and we take a vector V tangent to P at ADSN, which means that P is actually in, in the, sorry, V is in the orthogonal of P. Okay, and then there is a formula to write the exponential at P of TV. But this depends, so the matrix is Lorentzian, so this depends on the sign of this vector, okay? So um, this is in the, hyper, in the hyperboloid model, right? it's the analog of the hyperboloid in, H, in HN. So if VV, Let's assume up to multiplication that VV is one. It, that, so let's take positive and we assume it is one. So then the formula is cosh P, P plus sinh V. If this holds, if V is null, then the formula is even easier. And if V is negative, then we assume it's minus one. And now the formula is the same, but we replace with cos. So this is the formula that you would have in the sphere, right? Um, this is the formula that you get in Hn. It's actually very easy to check this formula. Let's say exercise for the students. In any case, the courses are done at 5 p.m., I think, and next mini course is tomorrow at 9.30, so it's like, no. Uh, 
15 hours to do these exercises for the students, plenty of time. Um, now, but what is the idea? Well, it's, it's very easy, actually. First, you check that these course actually live in the, in the, sorry, all this gamma of t. First, you check the gamma t, gamma t equal to minus one. It stays inside. It's easy to check the gamma prime of zero is v. And then what you check is the gamma, the second derivative is parallel to the point itself. In, in hyperbolic space, if you, when you take the, the second derivative, it will be a multiple of the point itself, so that when you project to H2, uh, to H2, the acceleration, the intrinsic acceleration is zero, okay? So this is a magic formula that we are going to use here. Uh, yeah, and by the way, this is called a space-like geodesic, this is called light-like, and this is called time-like. And I think we will learn more about this in, in um, general relativity. So these three cases in PSL2R, what are these three cases? So first, basically we can consider, of course we will take, uh, to make things simpler, take P to be the identity. The first case we consider V to be the matrix, uh, the matrix 0, 1, 1, 0 which is in the Lie algebra, which is in the tangent space of the identity because it's a zero trace, so it's in the Lie algebra. So the formula gives, uh, formula gives uh, this path of matrices is cosh T sinh T, sinh T cos T, which is a, uh, this is a one parameter family one parameter group, uh, likely groups of hyperbolic isometries. It acts on, 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 a, on a H2 like that. These are the isometries that translate along this geodesic. This here, here is minus one, here is one. Okay. Uh, and so what we see here is that so these are hyperbolic isometries. What does it mean? It means that it has two fixed points. Isometries of H2 are called hyperbolic if they have two fixed points in the boundary. Okay. And the other information which is important that we get is when we look at this geodesic, okay, in PSL2R, and we take its closure uh, in, so its closure intersects the boundary at infinity of ADS3 in two points. Okay. Why is that? Well, it's we, because if we take a sequence, a sequence of isometries like that, that translate along this geodesic of a larger, larger time, they will map the, these points, this is I, of course, sorry. They will map this point all the way up to here in the limit. And their inverses will, make, will map this point all the way to here, okay? But then we, take, we can take the sequence of isometries that goes in the other way, and the roles are, switched, are switched. The two points are actually minus one, one, and one minus one. So in the picture here, what we see are some curves like that going through the identity. There is this big point, which is the identity. There are some curves. They go through here. This is the favorite one, but of course there are, there are, of course there are others. So let, let me just draw one. So this is hyperbolic. Okay. And up to changing by isometry, they all have the same behavior. Second case is when V is a null vector. 
So the second we can, for instance, take this zero, zero, one, zero. This is determinant zero, so it is a null vector, okay? Yeah, I forgot to say that that one had determinant minus one. It was, uh, it, so, it's, uh, so it was a positive vector. This one is a null vector. So when we use the magic formula, the exponential T of TV, it is uh, one, zero, T one. What is that? This is a group of parabolic elements. It's again a one parameter group of parabolic elements. What does parabolic mean? as one fixed point in the boundary of H2. The picture is like that. With this choice, the fixed point is zero. So here we have isometries that do the following. This is the orbit of I, goes all the way to here. Okay, this is what parabolic isometry does. And therefore, in this case, gamma, its closure is, uh, is one point, single point, which with this choice is zero, zero. Because in this case, if we take the sequence, this sequence of di diverging isometries, they tend to send i to zero, but also the inverses tend to, say, to send i to zero. So if you follow the curve, in one way or in another, they end up to the same limit point. So here, in this picture is what this, this does, okay? Something like that. And actually there is an, an entire cone of null vectors. They, they intersect at just one point, okay? So this is the light cone, okay? These are parabolic, parabolic elements. And this is, this is what is called the light cone, the cone of isotropic geodesics, okay? This double cone, actually, okay? And the boundary here, so they all intersect. You see, here, here we have seen that they intersect, at, they intersect the boundary at a single point, which is made of two identical elements. And this, of course, happens for all of them. It's just that I have chosen this particular point, but it could have picked another. So this boundary here is the diagonal, RP1, okay? And the last case, before I finish, is for now what are called time-like geodesics. So I need to pick a negative vector, which I can pick um, uh, 0, 1, minus 1, 0. This has the determinant 1, so its, its quadratic form is minus 1. Uh, and here, the exponential V is, well, it's cos T sin T minus sin T cos T. So these are elliptic. It's again a one parameter group of elliptic elements. They act like that. Is I, they rotate around I. They have I as a fixed point. In particular, since they all have a same fixed point, it doesn't intersect the boundary. Because they all send I to itself. So this doesn't diverge. Or they actually say they send any point has a bounded orbit. So this is a closed geodesic. It's periodic, okay, clearly. Uh, and so here is the picture. These are geodesics that uh, stay inside. They go around. And these are these are elliptic. And these are so these are time-like. Time-like. These are light-like. And those ones are space-like. Okay, 
And uh, since a lot of people like Lee Group, I'll finish by a very quick remark, but Lee Groups, uh, actually the fact I forget anything, I don't think they... Yes. Yes. Well, this is, this is the Ligro PSL2R. So the one parameter groups of elliptic elements, they are, they are circles, right? They're just given by their angle. So this clearly has to stay closed, cannot accumulate on the boundary. While the, um, the um, hyperbolic one parameter families are homomorphic to R, so they sort of, they don't close each, they don't close up, they have to converge somewhere in the boundary. Okay, very quickly, last remark on Lie groups. Actually, the fact that these geodesics are one parameter groups is not, is not accidental, so this is always true. So always true that in a Lie group, the geodesics from the identity um, for a by invariant metric metric are the one parameter groups. But so I sort of wanted to, to to visualize them, but this is a very general fact that you know Lee groups you could have used from the beginning. Okay, I'll stop here. Thank you. <laughs>